Hey, hey, hey. What's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. We are back, ready for another episode of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. Yes. I am Ken. She's Tabitha. We are your host for today. <laughs> We're actually always your host, and that's the way we like it. You know, yeah. when we first started this podcast, um, the way we were led was not to have a lot of guests, even though we do have some. Yeah. We just felt like out of 24 years of yeah. marriage, there were so many things that we've done well and so many things that we have not done well, mm -hmm. that there was a lot of juice in us just sharing our lives with people. And um, by the sounds of it, um, you might agree. We're getting so many letters, so many emails, so many phone calls. Yes. And uh, we just want to say thank you. But you know what? And somebody <clears throat> wrote in, and I want to read what they had to say. This is short, sweet, and simple. Uh -huh. But they said they, they watched the video on renouncing pride. Uh -huh. And this is the, their comment. Bro! Exclamation mark. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you for this word. Listening to you from Zambia. Thank you for giving me hope. Right. Short and simple, but <laughs> God is doing his thing and we're it, able to be a blessing. Is it Zambia or Zambia? I say Zambia. It's probably... Well, you know where you are, so we just thank you so much <laughs> for mean, tuning in. So we're not going to stop there, baby, because <laughs> we're not going to figure it out. Praise <laughs> God. But anyway, thank you so much for tuning in today. And um, for those of you all who are newer to our show, you can hit the subscribe button if you want to be the first to get the content. It releases every Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our goal is so simple, to help you grow closer to God and closer to the people that God has brought into mm -hmm. your life. And so let's go. Um, today's episode is entitled 10 Keys to Overcoming Sexual Temptation. Ooh. And um, we kind of want to lay some foundation quickly. Um, give me one moment. Yes. We want to lay some foundation so that we can all know where we're going. Um, sexual sin is something that's super, super common right now, but it's very, very, very destructive. Mm -hmm. It was destructive in God's word. It's destructive in our lives. The scripture says something like about sexual immorality that um, every other sin is outside the body, but this one you sin against your own body. Mm. Don't know exactly what that means, but I do know this, that we are the temple of God, mm -hmm. earth and tabernacle. So you actually sin against the house of God wow. with sexual immorality. So with sexual mm -hmm. sin, mm -hmm. are we talking to just unmarried people or married people? Like We are talking to Lottie Dottie and every body. OK, so as a married couple, which we are, mm -hmm. God has given us certain parameters in his word in which we are to conduct our sexual lives in. Mm -hmm. outside of those parameters is what the Bible calls sin. Yeah. So um, so the call and the goal of sexual purity for married people, single people, old people, young people, no matter what nation you're in, if you are a follower of Jesus, mm -hmm. the Bible calls us to sexual purity. But I kind of wanted to start just with sin and kind of lay a foundation, and then we're going to help you help you really avoid some things. I'm okay. telling you, uh, I don't care who you are, what you've done, what you believe, you want to listen to this content and then um, share it with other people just so that we can get truth out because yeah. truth will make us free. How would you define sin? I define sin as missing the mark. Okay, so classical Classical, definition. yeah. Okay, and that's what sin is classically, mm -hmm. is missing the mark, meaning mm -hmm. that God has a mark, mm -hmm. right, and then we don't hit the mark. So that's what we Falling call sin. Falling short. Yeah. So he has a standard, but we don't live up to his standard. We create our own standard. Mm -hmm. That's sin. When we say, I don't want to do it God's way, I want to do it my way, that attitude of rebellion towards God mm -hmm. is, is called sin. When we know that the Bible says this, but we would rather change his word than let his word change us, yeah. that's what the Bible calls sin. And what's the problem with sin? Sin leads to death. Okay, so Romans chapter 6 and 23 says that the wages of sin is death. death. And there are many people that are dying in their calling, their anointing, and their fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. um, they are dying in, in, on the inside mm -hmm. because they, are, have, they have adapted a lifestyle of sin as the norm, and it should not be the norm. Yeah. When I think about people dying in their sin, I'm thinking about the lobster who's being boiled to death, where mm -hmm. it's, uh, I think they, they're they in the water. The water's not hot first. They're just chilling in the water, but uh -huh. slowly it gets higher and higher and higher in temperature uh -huh. when then the lobster dies. Like, you don't know that you're dying, right. but it's happening slowly. Yeah. 
the wages of sin is death. And I'm glad you death. say that because there's people who don't even believe that there is a thing called sin. Right. They don't believe that the Bible gives you the outline for what is sin and not sin. You're mm-hmm. already losing. Mm-hmm. If you don't believe that there's a devil, you don't believe that there's sin, you don't believe that God's word is God's word, mm-hmm. you're actually already losing the battle before you even begun. And so it's Satan's job to make sin look fun. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it is. It's his job to make sin look attractive. And sometimes it is. It's his job to make sin look and even feel good, and sometimes mm-hmm. it does, but sin is not our friend because the wages or the cost of sin is death, all right? And so when we talk about temptation, so I guess Satan's goal, mm-hmm. okay, is to get people to sin. For the unbeliever, it keeps you separated from God because of his holiness. Mm. But for those of you all who've given your heart to Jesus, sin does numerous things. It hinders your fellowship with God. It hinders the anointing on your life. Mm-hmm. It opens up a door to the demonic. Okay. Wow. It, you know, it, sin is not your friend. Right. Okay. And so um, Satan's goal is to get you to sin because sin leads you to death. But the tool, I think the number one tool, especially for this podcast, that he uses to cause us to sin is temptations. Mm. Okay. And so what is the greatest thing you've ever been tempted with, you feel like? Uh, I don't know the greatest thing I've ever been tempted with mm-hmm. probably to like, I don't know, fight someone. To like, <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> you know, just to beat someone up, uh-huh. you know, like to my, you know, to, uh-huh. you know, I, I have a really rough background. Uh-huh. And so I come from a background of like abuse and uh-huh. there was a lot of fighting in our house. Uh-huh. And so my greatest temptation was I'm going to put my hands around your neck uh-huh. and I'm going to strangle, strangle you until you. you don't have breath anymore. Okay. That was a temptation that thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. I never actually did. I can't say what my greatest temptation is. I think over the years, it changes depending upon what season of life Mm -hmm. you're in. Um, I don't know if I have a consistent temptation. It will probably have to do with matters of the heart, like Mm -hmm. maybe a temptation to not believe. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think people look at me who I actually have a gift of faith. And any any time we do like those assessments, I always um, score high in faith. But people who score high in faith many times are tempted or attacked with high levels of worry or fear. Mm. And we just discipline ourselves to be on this side, but it's the same thing. So God gifted it this way. Satan would love it to pervert it and go this way. Definitely. So I would say maybe, maybe that, I mean, there's all kinds of Unbelief. temptations, temptations to lie, temptations, um, sexual temptations, cheating, temptations. Uh huh. Um, I, yeah, I don't even know. I, I, you Some know. of those little common ones we deal with are like sneaking. Like I deal with my kids. Like if you're going to sneak it, you uh-huh. know, that's, you know, that's lying, cheating, stealing, like, you know, right. do things out in the open. But let me define temptation very quickly. It is an enticement mm-hmm. to sin. Mm-hmm. It is a lure to sin. Mm-hmm. It is like that urge to sin. Like there's almost something. I remember years ago when I was in college, I had friends who um, my roommate smoked tons of weed and I don't know what. People call it, what do you call it? Do you call it weed? You probably do because yeah. we're from the same era. Yeah. Some people call it reefer. Other mm. people call it marijuana. Mm-hmm. Some people call it Buddha. Some people call it pot. It depends on, you know, your, yeah. your demographic, yeah. all right? But anyway, let's just call it weed because we us. And, I mean, I'm talking about all the time. Probably 95% of the time in my house, somebody was rolling the blunt. Somebody was bonging something. Somebody was smoking a joint. Mm-hmm. But I was never a smoker. Now, I was a drinker. Back in the day, thank God I've been delivered and free for over 20 years now. Now, you did it all. You, 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 <laughs> no, you why did do you all. always have to say that, Because though. you did, you know? And you I was, mean, I didn't do it all. I didn't do crack. I didn't do cocaine. I didn't do molly. Like, I didn't do that. Okay, I, but I'm just saying I you was a drinker and a smoke. You weed know? at yeah. one point. And yeah. I can probably yeah. count on one and, hand. And cigarettes. Right. But this is not about you. Well, that's, that's a lie. Yourself. In high school, I did more. But Yeah, yeah you're right. Well, I did, what did you smoke. Do? In high school. I, a- I smoked a lot of weed in high school. <laughs> Let it out. Let the people know. I thought you was going to say you snorted something too. No, I did you not. Didn't. But if you did, just let I it mean, out. I mean, if I did, I did. You, hey, but I'm old saying. Things passed away. But you like to say to that I did everything, you. and that's not true. I, no, that ain't what I meant. I mean, I didn't mean literally everything. Okay. But what I'm saying is that you're different than me. Mm. I didn't smoke. 
One day, I'm in the house. All of my friends are smoking. They respected me for not smoking. Mm -hmm. And so they would puff, puff, and pass, and they would pass around me. Oh, he don't smoke. But for whatever reason, this day, they had a lot of cigarettes on the table, and I decided to pick up a cigarette. And when I picked that cigarette up, I had this enticement. I'm talking about this urge. I had this want. There was like this hunger, like, oh, somebody give me a lighter. Wow. I'm going to smoke this thing for the first time. And that's what temptation mm -hmm. is. It is that urge that is enti Now, thank God I came to my senses. Right. I put the cigarette down. I'm 45 years old. I'm happy to say that I've never smoked anything. And, I'm, and what I was saying is that you can't say that. That's all I was saying. I didn't mean everything. I mean, you can't say what I said. It's but, so funny, no, 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 no. the temptation okay. and how it came, though, uh -huh. because it's outside of your character. Like you, I right. know you you were an athlete all through high school. Mm -hmm. um, you took care of yourself in college. So I know your mentality, like your mentality isn't like I'm about but to put this in my body. But it was my environment. Yeah. And if you hang out in ungodly environments, those atmospheres suggest to you that you need to be mm -hmm. a part of it. That's Whoa. like with Lot. He pitched his tent towards Sodom. And then he ended up in Sodom mm -hmm. and Gomorrah and Abraham had to come get him out of Sodom because he simply put his attention towards right. there. And so you got to be very careful of what environment and what atmosphere you're in. Now, I didn't know the things of God. So I'm like, OK, these are my friends. They smoke and I don't smoke. I don't understand spirits. I don't understand environments and atmospheres. And I was enticed. I was tempted to sin. And I wow. thank God that uh, I got out of the temptation. It actually. Rem so it is possible to not give in to the temptation. Not only is it possible, it's, it's necessary mm -hmm. that we're going to be tempted at all over the mm -hmm. place at all points. Okay. There's nothing common to me. Cause we think of, like I said, my greatest temptation was not to kill someone. <laughs> that's like far out. You know what I mean? Like that's way far out. Right. And it's like, Oh, of course everybody wants to kill somebody, but we don't do it, you right. know, cause uh -huh. you're going to go to jail uh -huh. <laughs> or get killed in the process yourself. Uh -huh. But little things like smoking, it's like, Oh, it seems like that's harder to say no it's not to just that. I mean, you can be tempted to, you're trying to be on a, um, do keto, but you're tempted to eat some sugar. Mm -hmm. You can be tempted to, um, tell a little lie on your taxes or to, to fudge something. You can be tempted to, um, you know, somebody say, how you doing? And you say, I'm doing good knowing you ain't doing good. Right. I mean, there's all kinds of temptations, but this is what the scripture says. First Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation is overtaking you except what is common to man common to mm -hmm. man. So there's no like new temptations. It's not like Satan has new tricks. The same thing he's been tempting people with is the same things over right. thousands of years. So I think some people feel like, well, this is just me. I don't believe I got this. This They this. feel so condemned, <laughs> like, uh -huh, so it's, shameful. It's just me. You know? No, yeah. there's no new temptations out here, mm -hmm. you know, but it says, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be attempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape so that you can bear it. What jumps out to you? Mm, that there's a way of escape. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think just what you said is I think the trick of the enemy is to be like, oh, I can't believe I thought about that. Or I can't believe I feel like this. I can't believe I want to do this. And we own it and put the ownership on ourselves. Um, that's one thing. Right. Would Sometimes it's thoughts of the enemy. Right. Um, but it's temptation. Yeah. And with the temptation is the way of escape. I think that God has our back enough. Yeah. He knows our thoughts. Uh -huh. He knows what we're dealing with. Uh -huh. But in all of that, he gives us a way out. Like specifically designed for us in our situation, mm -hmm. tailor-made, uh -huh. like take the way out. I like to say it like this. Look for the exit. Mm -hmm. You know, now the exit's going to cost you something. Mm. It might cost you um, a relationship. Well, I thought you loved me, but I love God more. Yeah. It might cost you your reputation. You know, people might talk bad about you now that you follow Jesus, but God will always make an exit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our sin blinds us to where we're looking down and we're not looking up, looking for the exit. But if you are in a sinful situation, look for the exit, go to the exit Get out of it because there is a way of escape. Mm. Hebrews 4 and 15, it says this, for we don't have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, mm. but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, That's good. yet did not sin. 
This is one of my favorite scriptures, honestly. What do you what jumps out to you? It just makes me so appreciate Jesus <laughs> because he everything that I am tempted with, mm-hmm. he was tempted with, uh-huh. but he did not sin. Yeah. I am able to overcome yeah. because Jesus overcame. That's what I love about Christianity. Okay. Now for those of you all who are not Christians, listen, I've studied religions mm-hmm. for the past twenty years. There's over five thousand different religions. And all of the ones pretty much, are men trying to get to God. Mm-hmm. There's like some Zeus or some higher being, and we're trying to follow a moral conduct or a moral code for the most yeah. part. Now, there's some weird stuff out there that ain't got nothing to do with any of that. But for the most part, it's people trying to get to God. Christianity is the only one that says you're not good enough to get to God, so God's going to come down mm-hmm. and get to you. So God puts on flesh Jesus, Emmanuel, who is God with us, he eats the food we eat. He drinks the water we drink. He he breathes the air we breathe. God becomes a man. And so he knows what it's like to be you. He knows what it's like to be tempted. He knows what it's like to feel abandoned, rejected, betrayed. And that's why, it, man, we don't have a Zeus. We have a personal God. We have a God that knows what it's like to be humans. It, he, th- that's why he's so filled with love and grace yeah. and mercy because he walked this earth, but he did not sin. That's who Jesus is. Mm. To know him is to love him. Amen. Anything jump out to you with that? Just he did not (laughs) sin. He did not sin, but but he had all of those temptations. This is is what jumps out to me, that he was tempted in every point, Mm -hmm. every point. So Jesus was tempted to murder someone. Okay, so you're not alone. Jesus was tempted to lie. He was tempted to be jealous. He was tempted with gossip and murmuring. Suicidal thoughts. He was tempted. He was tempted. So you are different than your temptation. So a lot of people, when they're tempted with something, they feel like their temptation is them. Mm -hmm. They actually own it as a part of their identity Mm. or part of their value or worth. Your Mm -hmm. temptation is not who you are. So we are all going to be tempted with something. And what I do is I rebuke those temptations. I send those temptations back to hell where Mm -hmm. they came from. Now, today we're talking about sexuality. Jesus was tempted at all points. So when you really study biblical sexuality, and I understand we live in a day and time where people are trying to twist God's word, make it say something that it doesn't to confirm and affirm Mm -hmm. certain lifestyles. But if you look at Leviticus 18, Genesis the Revelation, complete um, exegesis and hermeneutics of the word, Mm -hmm. you will see that under the banner of sexual immorality is bestiality, incest, fornication, adultery, homosexuality, lust of the heart, and you can also put pornography. Those are just seven, okay? There might be more, all right? And so when the Bible says that Jesus was tempted at every point but did not sin, he was tempted with bestiality. Mm. Now, I know that's hard for us to imagine. It almost seems like heresy that our Lord and Savior, he was tempted at all points, Mm -hmm. y'all. He knows what it's like. Because he was all God but still all man. So uh, it's amazing. Like, okay, what animal did he look at? And, was, and, you know, he was tempted. He didn't give into it because he right. didn't sin. But what was it? What, whose dog was it that was like, you know, you know, like what 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 relative was around him that he had? to? T- like, I haven't been tempted at all points. Mm-hmm. I thank God for Jesus. Mm-hmm. He was tempted at all points. Mm-hmm. He was tempted with adultery. Like whose wife? Was yeah. he check? Was he tempted to? You know, what I'm saying, yeah. not saying checking out, but, but he, he was, was tempted. tempted you know, look at her again. Yeah. What 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 homosexual, you know, was it Peter? Was it Bartholomew? Where, where did the temptation come mm-hmm. from? What what was the lust here? Was mm-hmm. it Mary Magdalene? I know when she wiped my feet with her hair, that would have been tempting for me. I don't know where, 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 where it came from. But I love this part. But the Bible says, yet he did not sin. Yeah. Ooh. So he was tempted at all points, not some points, not the points that y'all think is nice and friendly. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He was tempted at all points, yet he did not sin. Wow. He wasn't showing us how to be God. He was all God and all man. Jesus was showing us how to be men and women filled with the spirit of God. And when you have the power of the Holy Spirit, no matter what temptation you're in, he's always making a way of escape. He set the bar of holiness here. It's only our sin nature that wants to say, well, I could never do that. That was Jesus. No, he's, he's the first of the brethren. Mm-hmm. He came as an example to show us w- where we could live and we could actually live wow. a life without sin. He would never say go and sin no more mm-hmm. to the woman caught in adultery if that wasn't a possibility. Right. And so I just feel like we need to make holiness cool again. And like God's word is God's word and his word is truth and mm-hmm. truth will make us free. Mm-hmm. And I don't get my philosophies from the world or social media or people's opinions. I go to the word of God mm-hmm. and I love Jesus for that, man.
he did not sin. Wow. And I wonder, you know, as you're reading that, like you talked about um, the the woman who washed his feet with her tears and, and dried them with her hair. And then she anointed his feet with perfumed oil. Like at what point, what was the way of escape for him? Like, what did he do? Like, did he say, you know, a lot of times for me, the way I escape temptation is through my words because your words override your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So if I'm feeling like smacking somebody, oh, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Lord, let me just pray for this person right now. I pray that their day is better. Mm -hmm. I pray that whatever's bothering them right now, like I'll just go in because that's my way of escape. I'm not going to sit here and be mad at you. I don't know. I work with um, beautiful people, Mm -hmm. men and women. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing new under the sun. So if I feel like I'm in close contact with someone. I remind myself that, oh, that's either my sister or my daughter. Yeah. I mean, there's just certain hacks that you have. Mm -hmm. Like, so I'm sure when she's wiping his feet, he's looking at her like a spiritual daughter, Mm -hmm. you know. And so I have two daughters. I have to do something in my mind. That's not on the table for me. Yeah. I got one woman. Her name is Tabitha. When it comes to sexual things, and t- she's the only one that's on the mm-hmm. table. It's just like anything else. You got to give your flesh a level of discipline daily. Yeah. You just can't go for whatever you feel like going for. Mm. But I want to go through these 10 points because somebody needs them today. Do you yeah, believe that? Absolutely. These are just 10 keys to help you overcome sexual temptation. Let's go. And we want to help you today. We want to give you some off ramps. Number one, you got to recognize it for what it is. Okay. Mm. And so if you are being tempted with someone, or something that the Bible says that sexual immorality, you got to say, that's wrong. Yep. And the first thing is, is that you have to be self-aware enough to say, I'm being tempted here. Now let me do some things to crucify my temptation. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. If, if you don't think that it's wrong, well, then you're probably going to give into it and do it. Yeah. But only what what the word says wrong is wrong. Uh-huh. Whether we make it up, we can make it up and say it's right, but that doesn't make it right. For me, it's like don't don't sit around and be like, well, that's just me. No, you got to recognize yeah. that that's, that's temptation to lead you to sin because sin produces mm-hmm. death. Number two, how to overcome sexual temptation is you got to stop and consider the harvest that's attached to the sin. Mm. Now I'm an investor. Yeah. I like to invest in real estate and then remodel a home with the hopes that we can sell it for more money later on. Yeah. People invest in their 401k or in their stocks and things because they're doing something in the present for future return. Now, I just think when it comes to sin, before you commit a sin, mm-hmm. why don't you stop for a minute and think about how that's going to ruin your family, ruin your reputation, what oh, disease yeah. you might get and what's going to happen to you. But you know what's wrong with people? It's in our heart that, oh, that ain't going to happen to me. Oh, you know, but we just... We just, we, we, we use some protection and, you know, it's okay. God's going to forgive me. And you allow your excuse to become a crutch instead of just, no, sit for a minute and think about the wages of this sin mm. is going to be death. Yeah. Anything? Yeah. And <laughs> what's done in the dark comes to light. Period. You know, the Bible says that. And so you might think, oh, nobody's going to find out. Oh, it's going to be okay. Oh, this is what everybody else does. Everybody else doesn't have the call that you have on your life. Yeah. The devil isn't out to get everybody else. He's coming for you yeah. and what God wants to do through you. Yeah. So we have to take it personal. Number three, you got to normalize temptation. You know, it is not abnormal to be tempted. It's Mm -hmm. not abnormal to be tempted with sexual sin. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we live in a fallen, broken world, Mm -hmm. and there's sin all around us. Yeah. We've all been born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We all have a fallen sin nature. So we are three parts in makeup, just like God is three. Mm -hmm. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We've been made in His image and likeness. We are spirit, soul, and body. I am a spirit, have a soul, live in a body. Mm -hmm. The spirit part of me is regenerated with Jesus. The soul part of me is being renewed and sanctified day by day, but the flesh part of me is not saved and never will be. And this is what the Bible says. It says, in your flesh dwelleth no good Mm -hmm. thing. It says, if you live by the flesh, you'll die. So what do you do? You have this war going on on the inside when your spirit wants to do what's right and righteous, but your flesh man don't want to do what's wrong. Mm -hmm. So you have to starve your flesh, feed your spirit. Starve your flesh, feed your spirit, and you have to normalize temptation. I love that. Starve your flesh, Mm -hmm. feed your spirit. Mm -hmm. Have you ever um, had any uh, same-sex attractions before? Temptation? I did. Uh Mm -hmm. Um, How long ago was that? (laughs) I don't know how long ago. (laughs) 
<laughs> All right, so what's that? That is a temptation? Not yesterday, right. maybe years. I don't know. Oh, come on. That was last week. But here's the thing, and, and the reason I'm joking about that is because even if it was last week, there's nothing wrong with you or your character. Mm -hmm. You live in a fallen, broken world, and media is going to suggest your flesh is going to pick up the antennas of your flesh. Mm -hmm. Just it, it wants whatever's ungodly. Yeah. So here's this war, and this is what people do. They take the bait. It's mm -hmm. kind of like fishing. You know, out fishing, you're out there, and basically the job of a fisherman is to put some bait on the hook that the fish will be enticed towards. Mm -hmm. And you kind of move that bait around a little bit. You move it around into that bait to that fish come up and grab hold of that thing. And so Satan's job is to tempt you with different things, mm. whether it be um, an adulterous affair, whether it be pornography, he's going to wiggle around a little same sex. He, he wants to see what bait you're going to take. And so just because you're tempted with something does not mean that's who you are. Right. We have to normalize that. Like people would think that's abnormal. Like, oh, the woman of God had a, a same sex Temptation. temptation. The man of God had a same sex temptation. Yet we live in a fallen, broken world. You are going to be tempted, but I'm not my temptation. I arrest that thought. I die to self daily and I build up my spirit, man. That's so freeing uh -huh. to everyone listening yeah. because you have to understand Jesus was not his temptation. Mm. Jesus was tempted at every point, yet right. he did not sin. Right. We can be tempted with anything and everything, but yeah. that's not who we are. Right. That doesn't mean that we have to sin. Right. And I think that that's where shame and guilt and people backslide or people fall off and they, you know, they, because they're just having thoughts. Listen, it's the bait of the enemy. Oh, you were always that way. You know, you're born that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you got married just to push this down, but you know, that you, you you probably you're a man you should like man you're a woman you should you should have never got married you know somebody you work with is better it's the lure it's mm -hmm. the temptation mm -hmm. it's the enticement mm -hmm. he makes it look fun but it's not the wages of sin is death and he's doing what if you don't take this bait he gonna put it like when the fish ain't biting right for fishermen they know you change the bait right so if you don't take the bait of fornication he gonna try to get you with adultery if you don't take adultery he gonna try to get you with pornography he's gonna do whatever he can to lure you away from god yeah because of his hatred towards god and towards us because we've been made in his image and likeness and wow. i just need people to stand up against temptation because if not you will accept the fact well that's just who i am that ain't who you are you was never created to be that exactly way. and it's <laughs> part of the way that you stand up to temptation is just by speaking out and saying no jesus yeah. was tempted three times in the wilderness each time he spoke and said no the word of god says this yeah, and written. so like you asked me if i had ever had a same-sex temptation yes i had the temptation uh -huh. and immediately when i had the thought i was just like okay i thought about that and then when i realized uh -huh. that's what i thought about i rebuked that in the name of Jesus, yeah. like immediately out of my mouth, I just rebuke the temptation. Sometimes I, I'm telling you, I have some of the wildest thoughts come into my mind, but I realize that my thoughts are not my thoughts all the mm -hmm. time. And so for whatever reason, Satan has access to a realm of your soul. So maybe it's coming from your flesh or maybe mm -hmm. it's just coming from Satan himself. I mean, I can be on the beach. just chilling. And I see somebody over next to me and they got their, um, their book, their backpack over there, their purse out, and I'll have this thought. I thought you were going to talk about a woman, a naked woman. No, <laughs> I'll have this thought. They're in the ocean, and they just left all their backpack and all their stuff. I could go, I should just go steal their backpack real quick and walk off. Nobody would even know. I bet they got their wallet in there. And I've never stole anything in my entire life. But for some reason, that fallen flesh. Have you had those kind of thoughts, though? Where I'm just sitting around. I'm like, ooh, they left that out on the that counter. Thought, I could just take it. But I, I, never I stole do have anything. dumb thoughts, but that's funny. But if you take that lure, yeah, if you yeah. take that bait, you'll walk around thinking you're a thief. Yeah. But you have to, like you said, open up your mouth. Right. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Right. I am wholly acceptable unto God. That's my reasonable service. Made in his image and in his likeness. Mm. I send that sexual immorality back to hell where it came from. I am who, who he says I am. Absolutely. Absolutely. Glory to God. <laughs> Number four, you got to know who you are in Christ. You know, you are more than your carnal instincts. Some mm -hmm. people call them animal instincts, mm -hmm. but you're more than that. Like, mm. so just because you're tempted to, to do something, it's the, the sexual immorality mm -hmm. does not mean who you are. Like it doesn't define my value, my worth. I find value and worth in what the word and who the word says I am. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I just see the plan of the enemy in that. So it's just, mm -hmm. you know, because it, there's, I think back to like when I was first um, 
you know, learning the things of God and overcoming my thought life. Cause this is, this is, these are, this is your thought life that right. we're talking about. And I learned that either there's, there's thoughts. Okay. It's either God's thought, your thought or the devil's, which one is it? Yeah. You know, do we have to deal with your own stinking thinking? You got to go back and renew your mind like the word says, or is it enemy throwing thoughts at you? Right. And we're, we live in a time today where the enemy has set it up so well. Ooh, music. So culture, well for you to be like, oh, companies, that's me. That's who I am. Oh, man. No. Yeah. yeah. That's why we have to go to the word and know who God says we are. Number five, you got to guard your gates. Mm -hmm. And so many times Satan's after your heart, mm -hmm. not your pump, pump blood heart, your spirit. Yeah. And the scripture says, guard your heart above all else for out of it flows the issues of life. Mm hmm. And the way that you guard your heart partially is by guarding your ear gate and your eye gate. Mm -hmm. What you hear will affect your, your heart. Yeah. What you see will affect your heart. Mm -hmm. If you are continually listening to music that is laced with profanity, vulgarity, sensuality, and sexual immorality, mm -hmm. your heart's going to go that way because that is a seed that's sown. Okay. And so years ago with I kissed a girl and I liked it, it was a seed sown into pop culture that was leading people through a harvest of something because what goes in the ear affects the yeah. heart. Yeah. The same with eyes. It doesn't matter if it's gangbang music. It doesn't matter if it's heavy metal music. It doesn't matter what movies, it, what you watch on Netflix. You are um, being desensitized little by little by little to think that God's way is wrong, but your way is right. And you have to guard your gates. Yeah, we have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, you know, what we do and what we don't do when we're sitting in movie theaters. You know, I like to um, exercise. And sometimes when I'm running, I'll play like 90s, mm -hmm. you know, our old school R&B, hip hop. And it's just like I'll have on like a Biggie song back in the day, a Puffy, not P. Diddy, a Puffy mm -hmm. Or like, you know, LL Cool J. And I'll be running and listening to the music like, oh, my goodness. Like, I'm singing along. Like, oh, I can't say that. Am I listening to this? And then I started like, okay, skip, skip, skip. Now, all of a sudden, I can't listen to any of the music because it's all just so polluted with huh, stuff that's going to speak to my heart. And I don't want that kind of fruit, you know. Um, and so anyway, I don't want those seeds being planted in my heart. But you have to be careful about what you're listening to. I just feel like people aren't um, as disciplined with mm -hmm. what they watch and see. Mm -hmm. I mean, even you, mm -hmm. to be honest with me. You, you like Bridgerton and movies like that. You're right. However, uh -huh. and you say that a lot, that I like Bridgerton. Yeah. And, and you're you right. Uh -huh. However, I do fast forward through the sex scenes. The sex scenes just because... I don't want to watch the set. I don't want to put that Here, in. Me. Here's the deal. I never like trying to mm -hmm. give somebody else my convictions. Like if you want to watch Bridgerton, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have any convictions. Um, however, there's a lot of people out there saying, well, I, I just don't have a problem with it. And they're just going doing whatever. I just heard um, um, there's a, 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 a prophet that I love. His name is Jim LaFoon. And he was having a conversation with Chris Hodges on a podcast. And he was talking about how, um, when the world sears your conscience mm -hmm. to where you're like, well, I just don't have a conviction. I can watch this. It doesn't bother me. That's that's the problem. It doesn't bother you. Mm -hmm. That that actually is the problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That it doesn't bother you. Like sexuality, sexual immorality, the commercial, the horror commercial, it doesn't bother you. So if it doesn't bother you, that's actually what we're saying the problem right. is. So I'm not here to um, uh, make anybody feel bad, but I am here for us to be more aware. And he was talking about exfoliation. You know how women, they go to, and I know you do this, and I do this too, because, you know, I like to be rubbed on Come on, baby. Um, at the spa. But you go and get a pedicure, and they exfoliate the bottom of your feet as a woman. Most yeah. women know that. They take off the dead skin. And so he was talking about how, you know, when he goes outside, he can't walk with shoes off because his feet are very sensitive, like mine are. Like, you'll never, like, like you can go outside and the kids, I'll be like, go oh, put your shoes on. You out here walking on all these rocks and stuff. But my feet are too sensitive. And that's really how we want our conscience to be. You're we a want high our, maintenance no, man. Listen, we want our conscience to be 
the fact to where it's so sensitive towards God and it's so sensitive towards ungodliness and worldliness and sin to mm -hmm. where it bothers me. Yeah. If you're not bothered by some stuff, that's actually the problem. Right. You can sit there and watch fornication, adultery, incest, murder, and mayhem, and you're not bothered by it. There's a problem with your sensitivity. Your conscience might have been seared. Yeah. And, and so all I'm saying is like, let us just consider Absolutely. what it takes to guard our heart. Now, I got to move on, but I think that's real good. It's good, yeah. Number six is place healthy parameters and boundaries around you. Mm -hmm. If you want to overcome sexual temptation, you have to put healthy boundaries and parameters around you. And so for me, um, there's just certain places that I don't go and certain things that I don't do. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to my psychologist and he was telling me, and I was just asking him a question, like, because he's 73, I think, and he's pa um, counseled many pastors that have fallen. And so I'm smart enough to say, what would you tell a young pastor to prevent him from messing stuff up? And he says he needs boundaries and parameters. Yeah. And um, that's not a law. Those are safety nets so you don't fall into nonsense. Mm. And he was telling me about how a pastor wouldn't even go out to lunch with another woman or somebody of the opposite sex. He wouldn't be alone in a car. He would make other people ride with him. And people say, oh, it doesn't take all of that. No, it probably takes more than that. Now, maybe that's not your thing. Maybe your thing is not opposite sex. Maybe it's same sex. But you need to know what your flesh likes. Yeah. And you have to be willing to put guardrails and parameters to protect the anointing and the calling that is on your life. So I'm walking in something. And I know my listeners are walking in, the, in something. I mean, a calling, the power of God. And you got to guard, guard your life. Wow, that's so good. I mean, because you can you have to guard your life in all areas. I think for me, like sex isn't one of the things that, you know, I might not be the one that like, you know, I can ride in the car, mm -hmm. you know, with a man. It, mm -hmm. it might not be my temptation, mm -hmm. but they're like alcohol. Mm -hmm. That would be a temptation for me. Mm -hmm. I've set up my life mm -hmm. to keep me out of scenes where there's mm -hmm. alcohol. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm not having dinner, a whole lot of dinners with people drinking alcohol because I know my temptation. Right. And that might not be a temptation for you ever. And it right. might be OK for you. But for me, I've mm -hmm. set parameters around myself. So we have to do the same thing with our sexuality. It's so good. Number seven is you got to speak the word of God over it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we need to get back to memorizing mm -hmm. scripture. Mm -hmm. So if you have a financial problem, study the Bible about finances. If you have a marriage problem, study the Bible about love and unity and marriage. Mm. Okay. If you have a problem in your sexual life, study what the Bible says about it. Too many people are making up the, instead of go to the word of God. Yeah. And I think that when we get back to speaking God's word, for he watches over his word yes. to perform it memorizing scripture again. Um, it's our sword of the spirit. Mm -hmm. The devil would love this generation to put down their Bibles because mm -hmm. you put down the one offensive weapon you got, the sword of the spirit. I know, oh, it's been changed. It's been written by, listen, I don't care if it's written by King James, King Tut, um, LeBron, James, I don't give a care. <laughs> I believe it's all inspired by God. Genesis, the revelation. God knows how to get us a word without contradiction and error. And we see the dead being raised still today, Absolutely. blinded eyes being opened by the word, for he watches over his word. Jesus was the word made flesh. And so he loves to try to take that sword. Number eight is you got to cast down thoughts. And so every thought that you have doesn't mean it needs to be meditated That's on. That's right. Second Corinthians 10, 5 says, bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. So if I have a thought about another woman, mm -hmm. oh, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. If I have a thought about another man, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. If I have a thought um, on my computer, well, ooh, you see, oh, what's her profile? Ooh, or lead you, see, there's soft things that lead you to hard things. And, you know, some people start here with just looking at bikinis and then they over into pornography because your flesh doesn't have governors on it. It just wants more and more and more and more mm -hmm. and more. So the, the bait that he's throwing is it starts off with a little thing to see if you're going to take it. Yep. And so you have to cast down thoughts. Words override thoughts. If you're being bombarded with thoughts, yes. temptation. Yes. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You know, I shall live and not die. I am who God's called me to be. I'm the head, not the tail. Greater is he that lives on the inside of me. And it keeps coming, keep, keep confessing the word, you know? And so number nine is submit to God, resist the devil mm -hmm. and he'll flee. So to me, it's submit and resist when mm -hmm. it comes to temptation, submit to God, resist, submit, resist. And I think we need to get back to just resisting temptation. Like I ain't fault. I ain't doing it. I ain't going there. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I'm not mm -hmm. doing it. 
Like even with people with gossip, they come up telling you some, well, and they try to code it in. Well, this person needs prayer, but you're actually slandering that person. Mm. Okay, no, stop right there. I don't want to hear that. No, please don't. Please don't. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm resisting it. Yeah, I think the resistance comes in because sometimes resistance can be hard when it comes to peer pressure and what other people think. Right. And so if I say no to this sin you know, what is everybody else going to say? Mm -hmm. And I think that can be hard at times, yeah. but we have to resist temptation, um, resist the devil. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially if you're in a relationship with somebody and you're talking about maybe being married one day and the guy or the girl is like, but you know, we're going to get married one day. And so, man, I, man, and it's almost like they're trying to paint the picture that if you don't have sex with them, you really don't love them or like them and you're feeling this temptation to do it with someone who really cares for and you really care for them you got to resist that you got to resist it you can't love anybody more than you love and God. you better question somebody <laughs> who's willing to team up with the team up with the enemy yeah. to take you down a path that you don't want to go down and last but not least is number 10 you got to fill your heart and mind with more of Jesus mm. you know Galatians 5 and 16 it says walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh mm. And many times when it comes to the lust of the flesh, sexual immorality is what we're talking about today. We hear a podcast like this and we say, that's it. For the next six months, I'm not sleeping with so-and-so. I'm not going around so-and-so and I ain't doing you know what. And we kind of set you, our willpower. Well, now you're going to see them at the grocery <laughs> store. They're going to call you on the phone. They're going to text you. <laughs> I mean, all kinds of stuff and all kinds of temptation is going to come up for that precious seed which has been sown in your heart. And so what do you do? You can't just go out with your willpower and say, I'm not going to do this any longer. You have to now fill yourself up with more of Jesus. See, the way that you get out of the flesh is not by getting out of the flesh. It's actually by walking in the spirit. Mm. So if you walk by the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's actually opposite um, focuses. One, you're going to hear this and say, I'm not doing this and I'm not doing that. And there are some things you need to stop doing. Yeah. There are some relationships that are leading you to sin that you need to go and adjust and cut off today. But the focus is not what you're going to stop doing. The focus should be on what you're going to start doing. Mm -hmm. And if I can start giving more attention to spiritual things, if I can start walking in the spirit, if I can start filling my mind, my ears, and my heart up with the gospel, if I can make it what uh, me singing towards God, can I put godly relationships in my life? Can I look into godly podcasts? Can I? Uh, what happened to old school? I remember when I first got filled with the Holy Spirit, I had this collection of CDs. Mm -hmm you know, which was music. And like back in the day, you had a collection, like I'm talking like hundreds and, and you know, maybe even thousands of dollars worth of CDs. Mm -hmm. And when I got filled with the Holy Spirit and rededicated my life to Jesus, I threw them all away. And it's not wow. that people have to go and maybe throw all their music away, but maybe you do. Maybe there is a season where you need to disconnect from the secular so that you can really learn that which is sacred. Yeah. Many times we have so much leaven in the lump because, oh, I ain't got to do all that because I'm under grace. And that's true, but you still haven't had a season of disconnect long enough for you to walk under grace in a powerful way. Mm. And I just feel like that was one of the best things that I did for about two, three years. Yeah. I basically didn't watch any certain movies or listen to any certain music. That doesn't make me God's favor or nothing like that. It ain't nothing we got to do. But I'm telling you what, it helped me walk in the spirit because I replaced all of that stuff that was doing me absolutely no good. I replaced it with listening to the word of God, listening to the preached word of God, more time in devotion, more time. And I walked in the spirit. And then all of a sudden I looked up and some of the temptation had gone. Mm. It wasn't even tempting no longer because I was so filled up with Jesus. Absolutely. And I just feel like everybody owes themselves a season where they can be so overflowing with Jesus mm -hmm. that temptation is a joke. That's so good. You know, there are so many times in life still today, and I don't even listen to secular music like that mm -hmm. or, you know, watch, you know, certain movies or whatever, but something will happen mm -hmm. And a song will come up from like the fifth grade, like the, the eighth grade. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it just comes up in me. And I'm like, hey, you know, or a movie mm -hmm. or, you know, I haven't watched a horror movie in years, mm -hmm. but I could be like outside and it's dark. And all of a sudden I see Freddy Krueger like what? That was <laughs> what? years ago. You know what I mean? But 
I right. just say that because that's what was sown into me. That's right. what I put in my heart. Right. Now, the principles are, you know, they don't change. You mm-hmm. know, God created the principles mm-hmm. like what we sow in our heart. Well, the devil knows that, too. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, we have to on purpose put good things in our heart mm-hmm. and out of the heart flows the what is it out of the heart flows the issues, issues of life. Of uh-huh. And so when things happen in life now, instead of Freddy Krueger popping up, mm-hmm. I need the word of God no to pop up. Against me, sure, I possibly. need these songs of God. Even I mean, though I walk through the valley what Whatever genre death. you like. Oh, oh. <laughs> I did that. We're going to keep it Anyway, moving. whatever genre you like, uh-huh. country, rap, rock and roll, there are there is Christian music for it. Yeah. And when you start pouring the word of God mm-hmm. in, I mean, I go to sleep at night. Ooh. Last night I went to sleep listening to the word of God on healing because mm-hmm. I was having a little issue. Mm-hmm. So last night I went li- listening to the word Keeping of God so that even in my sleep, Lord in my Jesus. dreams, mm-hmm. I'm sowing the word of God in my life. Yeah. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm healed by the stripes of, stripes of Jesus. Yeah. I thank you. That's what I want pouring out of my mouth. Yeah. And so we can be intentional with that. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would even say this. There are some people that just need to get out of the neutral zone. You know, I'm mm-hmm. thinking about someone who's very close to us and they don't listen to a lot of Christian stuff, but they listen to a lot of just not bad music, just like maybe Disney music, cartoon stuff, um, other like uh, certain. And that's like the neutral zone. And that's cool. Like, OK, my music isn't that bad, but is it good? Is it anointed? Is it kingdom? Is it building? Is it shifting the atmosphere? Mm. And I think sometimes we can hang out in the neutral zone because we don't like Christian music or it's not this or it's not that. That's bananas. You need to find somebody that builds you up. Absolutely. And that you like and make investments into your spirit. And so, hey, this has been really rich. Um, I hope that you guys have gotten something out of today. We did a whole series in our church called Sex God's Way. If you want to jump over to the Alive Church YouTube page, I think you can find a link in our show notes. It was actually nine weeks. I know some of you all um, are newer to our podcast, and we said some things that are um, counterculture. This is what we believe. Children of the kingdom should be counterculture. Um, the way to destruction is broad, but the way to the kingdom of God is very narrow. And so it's not to be narrow, it's not to be judgmental, but it is to walk in truth. For years, I lived a life of sexual immorality. I protected my sexual immorality. I cherished my sexual immorality. But thank God, I gave my heart over to the lordship of Jesus. Now, it's not about what I want, but what he wants for me. And he knows me. He knows you better than you know yourself. Mm. So I realize what we've shared with you today. For some of you all who are newer, um, we kind of uh, prolong some foundation that we've already laid. But I would encourage you, don't get off of this. Don't give up on it. Go back to sex God's way. Look at the foundation. Look at the word of God with a pure heart. And this is what I know that there are some of you all who've been living in sexual immorality that's been looking for the off-ramp, and your off-ramp is here. It's not even what people say, you know in your heart, you know in your spirit, just like I did many years ago, that how you've been living is not according to God's word and his will. And when you do it God's way, Mm. you're going to be blessed because of it. And we're going to be here to pray for you, journey with you, and help you as we do life together. Thank you so much for tuning in to our episodes today. If you enjoyed this um, episode, please make sure that you write a review, email us. We'd love to hear your testimonies. They encourage us. We have a a season of giving that's coming up in our church. You know, Thanksgiving is coming up, and we want to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody. But also we're going into December, which is our month of generosity. We actually start the first Sunday of December with a thing in our church called Super Sunday, where we ask the people of our church just to pray and ask God, God, what would you have me to give to end the year in faith, to believe God for something and more in the next year? And we would love for you to consider the same. If this podcast, this content has been good to you, our our only desire is to be able to reach more people and change more lives. And your gift and your donation would help us do that. If you would like to give in this month of giving, I know we have um, uh, 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 Giving Tuesday coming up after Black Friday. We got Super Sunday coming up. I'm talking about all of December. Just let the Lord use you. I think there's a link in the show notes. You can go to myalivechurch.org. Look for the giving button, um, the giving button, anything you give, nothing too big, nothing too small will simply help us change more lives. And we love you for it. 
Until next week, thank you for tuning in. We'll drop new content on Thursday. Make sure you subscribe so you can be the first to grab hold of it. We love you guys, and we're here for you and praying for you. We'll see you next time. Peace.